Right, let's talk law now. Parliament will hold a debate next week, Tuesday, and vote on the outcomes of the Section 89 report to deliberate on the findings of the independent panel into the circumstances surrounding the theft of money in 2020 at President Cyril Ramaphosa's farm in Palapala. According to the National Assembly, the December 13 meeting will be fully physical with no provision for virtual participation, and the voting method on the report will be by means of an open ballot and a roll call. The report, which was handed over by former Chief Justice Zandile Nobo to National Assembly Speaker Nosiviwe Mapisa Ngakula last week, established that President Cyril Ramaphosa may have violated the Constitution. To unpack this and what an impeachment process would entail, we are now joined by ENS Africa Director Aslam Musaji. Uh, Aslam, thank you. Thanks very much for being with us here on the program. Thank you, Leanne. Right, so let's, let's get into the nitty-gritty of, of, of an impeachment process and how it is going to, to work if it does go ahead. So the Constitution gives the National Assembly authority to remove and impeach the President from office for a serious violation of the Constitution or the law for serious misconduct or the inability to perform the functions of office. That, that's what it's, it's written and states there. But what does it mean to impeach and what does the impeachment process entail? So uh, the impeachment process is a process by which a legislative body or any other uh, constituted tribunal uh, decides to remove and impeach a president uh, or any other public official for that matter for serious misconduct. Uh, and it's a tool in order to hold, uh, in this case, the president uh, accountable for any serious violations of the Constitution or the law or a, a serious misconduct or the inability to perform the functions of office. So, I mean, in this particular instance, we're looking at an impeachment process that was basically triggered and anybody can submit this as long as you hold a seat within the National Assembly. And this particular one was by the African Transformation Movement who have a mere two seats in the House. Yes, that's correct. So really, the impeachment process is a three-stage process uh, in our law. Firstly, there's a preliminary inquiry by the, a, a panel that gets constituted. But before you can hold such a preliminary inquiry, that there has to be a member of the National Assembly that submits a motion uh, providing details of serious violations of the law or serious misconduct or the inability to perform the functions of the office. Uh, once that is received, the speaker, if she is satisfied, that what is provided does amount to, or could amount to a serious violation of the law uh, or serious misconduct. The uh, speaker then constitutes a panel to conduct the preliminary inquiry. That preliminary inquiry has now been conducted by uh, the panel headed up by the former Chief Justice. Uh, and that panel has uh, recommended that uh, the uh, president has a case to answer. Uh, and that report will now be placed before the National Assembly uh, next week. And the National Assembly then has the ability to adopt the report. Uh, if it adopts the report, there will then be a full-scale inquiry by an impeachment committee. The impeachment committee is generally constituted of members of the National uh, Assembly, some of the members of the National Assembly, I should say, and uh, at least uh, there, there needs to be at least one member from each of the parties represented in the National Assembly on the impeachment committee. Uh, if the impeachment committee then makes a recommendation that the president is guilty of a serious violation of the law or serious misconduct, uh, then the matter goes back to the National Assembly and there is then a debate and a vote 
on the motion to, re uh, to remove uh, the president. Uh, there needs to be a two-thirds ma majority in the National Assembly ultimately in order to remove the president from office. So having a look at what was decided yesterday from the ANC NEC, I mean, they're they basically saying that they resolved to reject Parliament's 89, uh, Section 89 panel report. So the two-thirds majority, if we look at the makeup of Parliament right now, and we look at the membership, we look at the amount of, of ANC seats are held compared to others, the chances, and this is an open vote, we, the, 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 the idea of having this as a, uh, um, an anonymous vote was, was given the no-go, so this is going to be an open vote. Talk to us about, um, in terms of the majority and what it is looking like for the president with those that are in favor of him right now? So if everybody within the ANC uh, toes the party line and votes against impeachment, then it's unlikely that the president will be impeached because the two thirds majority will not be achieved. On the other hand, if there are members of the ANC that go uh, rogue or, or, or decide to vote according to their conscience as opposed to the party line, uh, then it will be very interesting to see whether or not those members of the ANC together with the opposition parties will make up a two-thirds majority for the purposes of removing the president. But it's certainly no get, there's no guarantee at the moment that the two-thirds majority will be achieved. So I just want to go back to 2017 and we saw this exact thing happening with um, an impeachment against our former president, uh, Jacob Zuma. Uh, that, however, was not successful. But this is different to that because there was a constitutional court ruling changing how this impeachment actually now works. So we're going to see if, in fact, the impeachment does go ahead with our, our president. It is going to be substantially different to that which happened uh, in the time of President Jacob Zuma. Talk to us about the difference now. Well, uh, the, uh, the other important difference, uh, Leanne, is firstly that there's now an application by the president directly to the constitutional court to review and set aside uh, the uh, report uh, of uh, Mr. Justice uh, Nkobo and his fellow uh, panel members. Uh, and by virtue of that, uh, I understand uh, that the National Assembly is busy taking legal advice as to whether or not it can continue uh, with the impeachment process next week. Uh, I'm sure if the National Assembly is advised that it can continue with the process, uh, the president uh, may have to then consider whether it applies to court for an interim interdict to prevent the process from unfolding pending the outcome of the constitutional court judgment. Uh, if no such interim interdict application is launched or the application is unsuccessful, then next week Tuesday's proceedings uh, will proceed. Uh, the difference, the, the, the other difference is that in the process in order to impeach uh, or remove President uh, Zuma, that was a secret ballot and therefore uh, the uh, members of the public were not aware of who was vote voting in a particular way. This, however, appears to be uh, an open uh, vote uh, with members having to be physically present at the meeting in order to vote. Uh, and I think it then becomes more difficult for members of any political party, for that matter, to vote according to conscience. Mm. You, you have written quite an interesting article about this. And the, and the process you lay out in the article is in line with the process followed by the speaker. And, and, and your article says that the panel must make a recommendation on whether sufficient evidence exists to show that the president committed any acts which constitutes a ground for removal from office. And, and those are um, the, that the, the panel may not hold oral hearings. The panel must limit its inquiry to relevant written and recorded information placed before it by members of the National Assembly. And some of these have been a point of contention, including the wording uh, prima facie evidence and sufficient evidence. The fact that the panel could not subpoena. Talk to us a little bit more about this. So uh, 
one of the arguments being raised on behalf of the president before the constitutional court is that the panel misdirected itself because it used the wrong test. The panel, in essence, uh, considered whether or not there is a prima facie case of serious misconduct or a serious violation of the constitution of the law, uh, then concluded that there were various unanswered questions and by virtue of that there was a prima facie case uh, and therefore recommended that the president has a case to answer. Uh, president Zuma's team is arguing that that's the incorrect test and the proper test ought to have been that the panel considers whether or not there is sufficient evidence and no such consideration had taken place by the panel. Remember, this is a unique process because unlike the process in 2017, there were no rules at the time that were developed. And it was only after the Constitutional Court in uh, the, the Zuma case uh, had declared certain acts uh, unconstitutional that rules had been developed. And those rules make provision for this preliminary inquiry. It also makes provision for there not to be any oral hearings uh, at the preliminary inquiry stage. So it's left to be seen as to how our Constitutional Court is going to interpret uh, uh, what the appropriate test should be at the preliminary stage of the inquiry, which was the stage that was conducted by the panel headed by uh, uh, Mr. Justice in mm, mm. I, I want to just talk. I, I think in your answer you were you were you were referring to Ramaphosa's lawyers, not not Zuma's lawyers. But Sorry. that was. <laughs> don't worry. We I think we understood that. W which brings me to another issue, and 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 that is that of a motion of no confidence, because they two separate. The, the these are very separate entities, the motion of no confidence and, um, and of course, the impeachment hearing. So we, we've spoken to the impeachment and how that process is going to work. But then, of course, there is still the motion of no confidence. I mean, we saw uh, former President Zuma actually facing five motions of no confidence against him, which, which could have led to a possible impeachment, but it, it never amounted to an impeachment or a removal of, of um, uh, President Zuma. What has been your observation of how these processes are actually done in South Africa? So uh, it, it, it's interesting times. It's, it's times where even a small political party had the opportunity to submit a motion uh, to complain about what they saw as serious violations of the constitution of the law or serious misconduct. Uh, and pursuing there too, there was an inquiry uh, that was set up. Uh, the panel that conducted that particular inquiry did so expeditiously uh, and then delivered a report. Uh, and it's now up to the National Assembly uh, to decide whether or not to adopt the report. And, and if the report is adopted, whether or not you then proceed with a full scale inquiry before the impeachment committee. Mm -hmm. So what it does say is that the law is working, the rules are being utilized. Uh, and I think that's encouraging from the perspective of trying to hold public officials accountable uh, for what may be perceived as serious violations of the constitution or the law. Mm. One, just just a, quick, a, a quick last question for you. Some, some political parties have, have accused the National Assembly Speaker, um, Mapi Ngakula of protecting President Ramaphosa. I mean, they say that she's less interested in accountability and allowing Parliament to play its crucial role. Does an open vote undermine uh, or water down the purpose and power and, and gets to influence the outcome of the impeachment process? We, this is not our first rodeo. We've spoken about this many, many times uh, in, in, in the former Zuma administration. So we're speaking about it again. It, it, what do you think about that? I think it's not so much a question of whether the open vote is going to uh, ultimately influence the, the process. I think ultimately, if people want to encourage our members of the National Assembly to vote according to their conscience and not to simply adopt the party line, uh, I think it's important for members of the National Assembly to vote in, uh, to, to vote in a way that is in the best interest of the country. 
uh, and uh, you know, so we may have to look at in in years to come building in rules uh, which facilitate people uh, or members of the national assembly voting in terms of their con conscience, as opposed to having to toe the party line. Mm. All right, we've got to leave it there. Thank you. Thanks for giving us the, the legalese behind all of uh, what is taking place right now. Um, ENS Africa Director Aslam Musaji talking to us about the impeachment process as Parliament is set to debate the Section 89 report following the independent panel's findings that President Cyril Ramaphosa may have violated the Constitution in the way in which the theft of money at his Palapala farm was handled in 2020.